special meeting of the Board of Education, Town of Scarborough. It's July 23rd, 2015. Uh, may I have the roll call? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Please join me, Mrs. Leitch. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Any adjustments to the agenda, Mr. Sizemore? No. 5.0, new business. Uh, if, is there anyone here who wishes to speak <laughs> on this topic? It's a sea of blue tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none. 5.1, do we have a motion? We motion. do. Um, <clears throat> in response to the second voter referendum in which the school budget failed to pass, the town council has made further amendments to both the school and municipal budgets in order to achieve a new school budget which would have the support of all members of the town council and the school board. This amendment returns half of the $500,000 which was cut from the school expenditure budget prior to the second referendum and increases school non-tax revenues by the additional GPA allocation recently approved by the state legislature. The school board now acts to approve and adopt these changes. So in the form of a motion, move approval to amend the FY 2016 school operating budget approved at the school board meeting on June 25th, 2015 as follows. Increase general fund operating expenditures by $250,000 from the amount sent to referendum on July 7th, 2015. Increases will be made to the budget categories as follows. Regular instruction, $46,713. Special education, $6,300. Other instruction, co- and extracurricular, $161,793. Student and staff support, $28,670. System administration, $2,910. Transportation, $50. Facilities maintenance, $3,564. The amended K-12 general fund expenditure budget will now total $43,543,756. And that is a gross number. Not a gross number, that's the number is gross, not net. <laughs> Increased general fund operating revenues by $884,891 in additional GPA allocation from the amount sent to referendum on July 7, 2015 for an amended non-tax revenue total of $5,884,268. This will result in a reduction of 634891 in the school's request for local tax funding for a new total tax request of $37,659,488, which is the net cost to the town. Second. Very good, Ms. Piazzo. Um, I think we're here predominantly for a couple of reasons. Um, we're here because the voters didn't act the first round and they came out in force for the next round. I, I hope we can continue that momentum and continue the process moving forward all the way through November elections and beyond because it's the voter engagement that makes the difference. We've been lobbying very hardly very hard and very diligently for several years, uh, but the difference is the, is the voter turnout. That's what, what really makes the difference. So I was very pleased to see the voter turnout. Um, I hope we can get through this budget cycle. It's not perfect, um, but it's a good compromise, I think, in terms of moving the process along. It allows us to start the discussions next year for some systemic changes and allows us to build on the collaboration that we have with the council and rather than continuing to, to um, move backwards from the process that we've made. So um, I certainly can support this. Uh, I hope that the town can support it, and I hope we can move on to the business of structural improvements that need to happen. Very good. Yes, Mrs. Murphy. Um, I agree with Chris that this is um, a budget we can live with. It's not ideal. It's not what we in a perfect world would have, but it's the best we've 
we're going to get right now. So let's support this. And you know, some things have been returned to um, the budget, like athletics and activities, which I know are very important to kids in school and to the families, um, and bring back some uh, professional development. So I think it's, like I said, not ideal, but going forward, let's just build on um, the engagement and people getting involved in the process and knowing what they're voting about and knowing um, what the numbers actually are and paying attention to um, the details and not just a percentage that you see on a sign or read in a column in the newspaper. So this is, um, I think it's a budget that we can all get behind because it's relatively fair and that's what, that's the best we can hope for. So. Yes, Ms. Perry. Uh, Mrs. Sizemore, how many unfilled current positions do we have? I'd say probably around uh, 12 to 15 unfilled. Mm -hmm. And and do we including have? Ed Tech. I mean, including I mean everybody. Yep. Absolutely everybody. 12 to 15. And how many anticipated positions uh, that are not current positions? In other words, over and above what we currently are employing. You mean new positions? Yes. I think there's one. One? Mm -hmm. I can think of. Thank you. Uh, I would like to know also, not immediately, uh, for the next budget cycle, uh, how much it will cost us to reinstate all seventh grade activities? I think that's that's going to be one of my goals if I am on this board uh, next year. I also recall back in a long time ago, and the former fire chief reminds me of it occasionally, Mr. Carson. I stood before the council and I said we should never ever be debating whether or not we can buy a school bus or a dump truck. We should be sitting down as a town and setting priorities for the town. That's never happened. Chris has made a concerted effort to do that the last two years. The town council does their job, it is their job to set the bottom line. I don't think it is fair for the town manager to be quoted as saying the superintendent says that we can do without these $350,000 worth of cuts. And that's right in today's paper, by the way. Uh, I don't think that's fair to the superintendent. I don't think it's fair to the parents. I don't think it's fair to the council. Those $350,000 worth of cuts that we we presented first are not easy to come by and may not be sustainable over the long haul. We may have to cut back to cover some of those uh, costs, those reductions. So is this fair? Is it the best we can do? I don't think it's fair. I appreciate, totally appreciate the support that is being shown by people in this town, and not just parents, for our children and the budget. I would like to know where people think the soft money is. That's a term that's being thrown around. I would like to know why people get so angry and cast dispersions on other people, whether it is members of this board or members of the council or members of the parents group, why can't we have civilized discourse, disagree? We disagree here. We don't always come to grips with everything in unity. That's very disconcerting to see what's happening. Uh, I think it's disingenuous when people do it anonymously. You don't know, as my father would say, they're gutless wonders. They don't want to stand up and be counted. We do the best we can, but we are going to fight for these children. I am, have decided I will run again for re-election. 
I am going to continue to fight for our children, and I will vote for this budget, but no, it is not enough. It is not what we need, and we will live with it. And I thank everybody on this board, our administrators, and the council for coming up and swinging the bat for our children. I wish it was a home run. Anyone else? Yes. I just have a couple things that I wanted to clarify on this motion. Chris, you can speak to it best. Mm -hmm. um, when people see this, it says the co and extracurricular is reinstated at 161.793, but I just want to be clear that um, part of the Wentworth activities are under general instruction, correct? If you look at the, the way we structured the proposed reductions, it was in three phases. Those phases, as you know, we all worked on them together. They weren't in any particular order of priority. That <coughs> was, we, we kind of did the path of least resistance first, and as we got more into the weeds, we got a little bit, it got a little harder. Mm -hmm. So what the 250 does, and what we did this morning in finance, was we basically rolled it back. So we said the phase three, which was all of the things that were in athletics and activities co-curricular, we reinstated those. Phase two, which was the 70,000 in, in professional development, we reinstated that. And then we've already received some uh, savings in the phase one section based on already completed hires, the shared services that was already realized, and the retirement piece that's not going to be utilized this year. So we were able to um, work back and reinstate basically everything that was in those phase two and phase three discussions, and I believe the Wentworth activities was in that phase three, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Yes. So, so that, that okay. is able to be reinstituted. Reinstitu Great. I just want to clarify that for people who are looking at that number and it doesn't equal 180, and right. there would be some confusion. And I, do, I, just want to, sorry, I, just want to, I just want to point out that those documentations, I believe Kate's going to put them up on the website uh, shortly after this meeting, or if not, probably by tomorrow. Um, so the documentation, the sporting documentation from this morning and from this amendment will be up there. And then I also just wanted to say that I, I too, will support this budget. I think Jessica said it last night. Um, it's a, a budget that no one really likes. It's, it's a compromise. It provides tax relief for those that are concerned with that, but it also restores some funds that um, the parents and, and school supporters were looking to have reinstated. So I think it's, it's a compromise. Do I love it? No. Uh, do I feel confident that we've made cuts or reductions in categories that can handle those reductions? Yes, without a, a major impact to the students. Like Chris said, I think um, some of the things we've already started to realize with retirements and um, rehires it, it is encouraging. So, so I will support it, and, and I encourage everyone to get out and vote. We're, we're, it's Groundhog's Day. We're back again. Early voting's already started. You can vote starting today. You could have voted all the way through next Thursday right here in Town Hall. Um, then with circumstances on Friday and Monday, and then Tuesday the 4th is Election Day. Voting. Very good. And Mrs. Massengill. I, too, will support this budget, of course. None of us are happy with that, but of course we've already discussed what a compromise is and neither side is happy. So we're all just going to agree to move forward and get on with this process and uh, hope that everyone comes out and I am going to be the one who says it. Vote yes. Let's pass this budget. Please, come out, vote yes. Let's, let's come back together and then discuss this again after we've all voted yes and we can move on. And I think that's just really what we need to do. We need to get past this and kind of lay this one back and say, now going forward, here we are. This is what we need to do. And start again. And maybe this time we're going to start even earlier. <laughs> so not that I want to suggest that this is a year-round process, but it sort of is. perhaps <laughs> it is. Yes. Ms. Sorry. Perry, then Ms. Gazzo. <laughs> Sorry. I, I just, I just uh, <laughs> also want to give a... Uh, heartfelt thanks to our students who spoke. I just think that they were eloquent, 
Right. Emma, I saw Emma after the meeting last evening, mm -hmm. and she was absolutely superb. I said she should have told those folks that she was a member of this board because yeah. she, she said, I forgot. <laughs> <And> Me too. <laughs> our students were at absolutely eloquent and on point and, and uh, didn't embellish, said it and said thank you and walked away. I'm very proud, very, very proud of them. Okay. I, I, I just wanted to follow up with a couple of points that um, had brought up, and I'll keep them very brief. I, I can share with you that uh, I have been in contact with Councillor Baybine already, and we're already starting the planning processes moving forward. Um, once the budget process is hopefully complete and it passes, um, we do have some, some follow-up work to do from this year's joint sessions. Uh, we're going to do some lessons learned between the two groups. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to try and, and start meeting in September, not necessarily to start talking about the details of the budget, but to start talking and framing the, the, the discussion on definitions of terms and, and you know, what, what's a level services budget, maybe what are our goals, and if, are there ways to align council goals with school board goals, and how do we do that? So, so those discussions are going to start earlier this year, certainly in September. Um, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully get into that routine of, of, of meeting regularly, uh, and as the details start to come through, we'll, we'll start framing the budget out a little bit earlier. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, I thought the process this year really was not flawed. I mean, I think we, we started the process in January. Um, we worked through to a level services budget in June. We answered all the, all the, the council's questions. We had joint meetings. We had a joint group meeting between the board and the council where we sat down and said, this is level services. This is where we can agree to be. And I thought that was um, very well arrived at. I, I don't think there was anything wrong with how we did that up until this point. I do think the challenge came after that referendum failed. And it, it's really important for us to be able to move past that and, and not lose ground with what we've done this year. So the last few weeks have been very contentious. Uh, it's, it's a very emotional topic for many people, but <coughs> hopefully we can move through this now. Um, you know, both sides have, have a responsibility now to look at how they're going to move forward, and I, I don't think it's going to be, as I said last night, this isn't the beginning of the end. This is the end of the beginning, and we've got good a good foundation laid now, and I think regardless of who's sitting in finance seats or who's chairs, if we get a good framework in place for shared uh, discussions and communications, I think it'll last. I do. And it needs to because the communication is the key between the two groups. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're working on it already. Um, it'll be a short summer, but... You know, I, I think it was, um, there, there, this is not, it, this isn't as, uh, I feel a lot more positive coming out of this <laughs> reduction than I have in previous years. Let's put it that way. Anyone else? Any thoughts? And so I have, I have a few things as well. Um, the school board worked tirelessly this year on the school budget. Not that we had, didn't in the past few years, but we made such an extra effort this time to be more transparent, to, <coughs> to work closely with the town council, at least within the finance committees, to you know, arrive at what we understood as a level services budget prior to that first vote. So uh, you know, I think a lot of people think that uh, we just come up <coughs> with these things at the end of the year. This is a long process. It starts way back. It probably starts you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Sizemore. My guess is that it starts in conversations between principals and their staff way back around December. Correct. And that those are the initial times, it may even be November in some schools, mm -hmm. where those initial conversations don't involve the board. Uh, they are being held within the school district. So those first discussions start happening, and then in those winter months, that's where a lot of the meat of the work is happening within the school district, particularly. And we're kept informed in, in our regular meetings with Kate and uh, the superintendent. If you recall back on that first um, day in, it was a Friday afternoon, the first 
of uh, April when we met with the staff and they talked to us about <coughs> what they had gone through to arrive at the line by line items that they were asking for within their schools. It was clear to me at that time, and I said so, that there were, had already been numerous things that they felt they needed. I questioned them specifically. Yes, Do did. you need these things? Are you telling me you've cut these things because you feel you cannot ask for them this year? And the answer was yes to that, because I listed them down. So, you know, I know people sometimes tend to get involved in this process <laughs> within the last you know, <laughs> month of it becoming closer to, to the, <clears throat> the first budget vote, and they, they may think that we hadn't thought about a number of things. We, we've looked at initiatives here over the past few years that we've spent months and months discussing. And so it's, it's not a new topic. Have we looked at it? Have to, we looked at other places to find it cheaper? Have we you know, really analyzed this whole topic? And then to have people who come forward in those last few weeks and say, Gee, have you looked at this? Have you looked at that? Have you ever been? And we just spent two years on this, or three years on this. It has fully been analyzed, yes. And so we've done our work. We bring forward, you know, all, all, all of what we have done for those months. And in our recommendations, it's not a simple thing that we come to a decision on in just a few weeks. Um, I. You know, it was a lean budget to begin with, <coughs> to begin with. It was lean before April. And so it, it just yes. became leaner each time we met beyond that. Um, and so I, I feel like the town needs to decide, who are we? What do we believe in is important in our community? Do we believe that it's important that we all contribute to the education and that we're careful that it isn't being dismantled gradually, chiseled away at year after year? Because that's what I feel I have seen. And that's unfortunate. We, it's not a good thing for our community to see it declining, to see um, you know, information coming out nationally that shows how we're ranked lower and lower each year. That's not good for this community. You know, and, and uh, we have a lot of uh, value in this town because of our geographic availability, the highway, the beaches, everything. We need really good schools, too, because that's the number one thing people look at when they're trying to move into town. We heard that last night over and over again. So... You know, I just feel like we have to decide where we feel. We're, we're more like a service than we are a, a typical business that's out there. We're a service to kids who have needs. And those needs have to be met. If 15 highly needed uh, special ed kids come into town, we've got to provide those supports along with all the rest of the kids as well. And so, you know, it's a little bit different in terms of just thinking we're just another business and we ought to just have a cap on it and decide, here's the max, we're not going to come in with anything higher than this. Particularly in a town that has so much ability, so much land still, so much ability to still grow and encourage these families. I, I you know, I'm sorry, I know I'm getting on a <laughs> tangent here, but Jackie, did you want I think one of the things that we can do for ourselves and for the town, is develop one sheet that tells the total number of employees, <clears throat> total number of square footage of the buildings, mm -hmm. number of buses and travels, miles traveled per day times 180, what we've paid for utilities, what we pay for insurance, what we pay for staff development. And that point was made last evening when one of the speakers said, we expect our policemen to have staff development. We expect our firemen, fire people, to be, have staff development to keep their licenses in, in many instances. Mm -hmm. 
We don't expect our doctors to go to school and get graduate and not do anything else after that. So I think that it's important that we make it as simple as possible because when, when people try and decipher that budget and they have to see, you know, they look at six buildings plus mm -hmm. central office, mm -hmm. they, they can't figure it all out sometimes. So I think that's something that we might aspire to in the future. Christine? Chris. Okay, Chris. Um, I, I don't think that's a, a bad idea, but I think that's more of a treating a symptom than treating the, 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 the disease, for lack of a better word. I think our challenge is really, um, a st we, we've struggled with this for the past couple of years, and that's establishing our goals, establishing not just our goals for the year, but, but what are we going to measure our performance against? Are we going to say our goal is to be at uh, so much per pupil spending, or is it going to be at so much poor, you know, so many uh, p uh, students per classroom ratio, or is it going to be based on certain learning results? And I think once, in, instead of getting into the, you know, explanations of what we're doing, I, I mean, I, it's all there, it's all out there. I mean, there's no information that we, anybody here has that's not on the website, that's not available. Uh, to Donna's point, the frustration thing for, frustrating thing for me is people coming in late to the game, not having been living with this budget for six months plus, and then questioning where, how we get to our, our solutions or questioning the process that we've gone through. Uh, I, I heard numerous speakers get up, and, and I, I try not to get into individual points of defending ourselves because, quite frankly, I don't think their arguments are worth defending against. But it, it, it is a little disingenuous to get up there and say, you didn't look at the whole budget when you were asked to reduce things. We didn't have to. We know what's in the budget. We've been living with it for six months. There's no need to go line by line when you've constructed the budget and you know what's there. You inherently know the areas that you can look at and that you can't look at. That's called being educated. That's called being aware of what your roles and responsibilities are. So I, I think the challenge we have is and I heard it several times, both in discussions with the council and with discussions out in the public. What exactly is a level services budget? Who determines that? What does that mean? You know, what, 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 what does that look like? Um, you know, sitting here, obviously, m my response would be, the only people that are qualified to really say what that is are the superintendent and his staff. That's who we hire to do that job. This is what they do for a living. They're experts at this. And quite frankly, if we question what they're doing and we don't feel that it's accurate and we don't feel that it's realistic, then we need to look for a new superintendent. I don't think we're there. I, I, I see the process. I'm convinced that that person is the expert. That's what we're paying for. But to have people who on the council and in the, in the public say, oh, I, I, I don't agree with that. You, you must be able to do something differently. That's from a point of, I, I, I guess I'll, I'll use the word ignorance, to be honest with you, because that's looking at something and not understanding truly what's behind it. And if you don't understand what's behind it, you can't really affect the change of it. You could not like a number for the sake of not liking a number, but you can't sit there and honestly say, you can look in this point. You can, you, you can save $320,000 on, on, on salaries. That's disingenuous. You have no idea what a, what a collective bargaining agreement looks like or how they're negotiated. So, so I think our challenge isn't just coming up with a sheet of paper or coming up with a new way to explain it. I think our challenge is really a, a, a educating the council first of what we do, how we do it, why we do it, and, and having them respect that a little bit more. I'm not saying that individually that we're getting disrespected or I'm not suggesting that, implying that, but when, when, when someone gets up and says, uh, the planning board has reviewed this zoning and uh, we agree you should pass it, and everybody goes, oh, well, if the planning board said it's okay, then it must be okay. But when the school board puts a budget out there and they say, uh, well, the school board backs this budget and we've spent months putting it together, they go, yeah, I don't think so. I, I think I can do it better. I think I can do it differently. I, that's a disconnect somewhere. That's what we've got to work on, I think. And, and we'll, we'll, we will get there. We will. It's going to take time, but 
this budget right now is we're not going to solve that all this year no. with this. And this is the compromise that we have. And I think we're, we, we, haven't, we, we haven't retrenched. We still have the, the, open, the open communication between the board and the council. We still have that. We'll build on that. And eventually we'll get to that point of trust and respect. And then once that happens, we can both go out into the community and say, this is what we have, this is why, and this is where we're presenting it from the town. But how many pages was the budget? <laughs> you mean just line items or, or? When we presented the budget, how many pages was it? 26 or 27? 23, and then you had, I think, school nutrition and some other pages that were beyond that. But I think okay. there were 23 line item pages. And, and sometimes that's double -sized. just a little much. Clearly. And that's why I'm saying Clearly. if we can break it down to one sheet, that people can see, and then they have a basis for asking questions. Right. But when we <clears throat> divide it out into seven or eight parcels, so to speak, they have to go through each parcel to see what the salary is, what what the uh, health insurance is, what, all of that, and they have to go. And we've done. The, I've done the same thing. So mm -hmm. if I have to do it. And I'm a little more familiar. I'm just, I'm just making a suggestion, and we can discuss it as we move forward. So thank you. Don't think it's a bad idea. I don't. I, I, we, we need to do that. We, and we've, we've been talking about that, too, the best way to communicate the information out. So. Anything else? All set. So we have a motion on the floor. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you all for your hard work. So do we have an motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Very good. All in favor? We're done. Good night, everyone. See you all. Michael, I want to thank you for being so fair. Truly. <laughs> you have. <laughs>